Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at parametric equations so we can answer questions from exercise 8a. So parametric equations, we're only really going to see a brief outline of them in A-level maths but they're really useful when you get to university degree uh, types of subjects um, in which they're a really powerful tool to be able to um, describe um, a, a curve basically. So um, the x and the y coordinate this time are going to be calculated separately. There's going to be a function with regards to t or theta that will work out the x coordinate and a different function that will work out the y coordinate. So effectively here we're, cre we're creating a function that has a different rule to calculate the x coordinate and a different rule to work out the y coordinate and there's going to be a third letter involved. We generally use t or theta um, to represent these different letters. So the process often used in physics to represent horizontal and vertical movement separately, such as resolving forces, the letter T is usually chosen and it can represent time. Yeah, so T is time, theta will be degree of rotation. Uh, draw the graph with the function, so this is a really straightforward one, x equals 2 times T and y equals T squared. So for the values of T, we can work out x coordinates and for different values of t we can work out y coordinates and using these graphs we can actually get graphs that kind of curve back on it itself which is quite helpful. So what we're going to do then is we use a table of coordinates just as we do with x and y coordinates we're going to use a table of coordinates um, with t values this time so t is from minus 3 up to 3 We'll first work out the x-coordinates using the x-coordinate rule, 2t. So double all the t values and that gives us our x-coordinates. And then we're going to work out the y-coordinates by using the t values and substituting into the y equation. So square them and then start plotting a graph. Your coordinates are going to be these two red values down here. t is not actually plotted on the graph, it's just used in the equation to help work out the x and the y value. It's never plotted on the graph. So we're going to just plot the x and the y coordinates and we get a roughly quadratic looking graph. We were kind of expecting that. Nothing much special is happening to the x coordinate and the y coordinates being squared. A good question would be, well, how can we convert these two equations here back into a normal Cartesian equation now we're going to refer to Cartesian equations as y in terms of functions of x. So a good place to start is to rewrite x in terms of t. So divide through by 2 and we're going to get t is equal to x over 2. And now we're effectively just going to substitute this into the y equation, y equals t squared. So it's going to be y equals x over 2 squared or expand the brackets x squared over 4. And that's the equation of the graph that we previously had. OK, let's have a go at a more difficult one, this one here. x equals ln t plus 3, y equals 1 over t plus 5. The question is find the Cartesian equation, so the combined equation in terms of x's and y. Uh, for the curve y equals f of x, and x is going to be greater than k, that's going to be part of the domain. So the first thing I would do here is rewrite out x and just rearrange it a little bit. So we've got uh, t equals something to do with x's. So in this case, e both sides and subtract 3. e to the x minus 3 equals t. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this t and substitute it into the y equation. So e to the x minus 3 plus 5. So uh, do the simplification of the two numbers on the bottom there, and we're going to get 1 over e to the x plus 2. But now we haven't quite finished part A yet. We still need to work out the domain x is greater than something. So we are told in this question here that t has to be bigger than minus 2. So that's going to have a, an indicator on what x is going to be allowed to do. Let's start substituting in t equals minus 2 and just see what happens. Effectively, we're seeing what the starting point is. We're going to see here that x is equal to ln 1 or that x is equal to 0. So it looks like it's going to be something to do with 0. Either it's going to be bigger than 0 or less than 0. Let's just do a little check. 
um, by checking a coordinate slightly further up from minus 2. Let's maybe check um, t equals minus 1, for example. So as t increases, what's going to happen to x? And we'll substitute t equals minus 1 in, and we get 0 0.963. So we can see that as t increases, x increases. And we saw from up here, when the t value was minus 2, so effectively the minimum value of t, the min t value is equal to minus 2, this will give us a min x value of 0. So therefore, what we can say, whoops, kind of written over it here, is that the domain of this function here is x is bigger than 0. Not equal to 0 because t was never equal to minus 2, just bigger than 0. And the next thing we can do here is now write down the range of f of x. So what I would do here is I would use the y coordinates here and the t values of bigger than minus 2. So what I'd do is take the y coordinates because the range effectively, if you remember, the range is always basically the set of y coordinates. So substitute the limit in, substitute minus 2 in and we get 1 third. So for the minimum value of t, we're going to get y as a third. But let's see what happens as we increase t ever so slightly to minus 1. So substitute in minus 1, and we get suddenly now a quarter. So that's saying as t increases, y decreases. It's gone from a third to a quarter, and that is decreasing. And we can also see here for the no matter how big t gets, this expression here is always going to be 1 over something big. So its maximum value here, or its minimum value here, is going to be 0. But it's also never going to touch 0 as well. So we are at the moment considering what happens to y as we substitute in different values of t. Um, it's going to have a maximum point of a third, and it's never going to go below zero. It's never going to touch zero, but it's never going to go below zero either. So in this case, the range is in between zero to a third. So for the domain, we consider what happens to x as t changes, and for range, we consider what's happening to y as t changes as well. Uh, what's going to happen with this graph here, just in case you're interested, so essentially when the curve is expressed parametrically, you have separate functions for the domain and range, which is what we're seeing here. The curve is shown above, although remember that we are only considering the parts where x is greater than 0. So effectively, we are just considering this portion of the graph here, and yet we saw that x can be anything bigger than 0, and we saw that uh, y can be anything in between a third to zero. Right, your turn to have a go at these two questions here. Then all we're asking you to do is just combine the two equations into one normal equation, rearrange the x one to work out what t needs to be, and then substitute it into the y equation. Pause the video and try these two questions out. Right, okay then, so let's have a go at question 1e. Let's start with x equals 1 over t minus 2. Rearrange this and we get x t minus 2 equals 1, so times both sides by t minus 2. <coughs> Expand the brackets. x t minus 2x equals 1. Now we want x equals, sorry, t equals something to be able to substitute it into y equals t squared. So what we'll then do is we'll add 2x onto both sides and divide through by x. So once we've got t equals something to do with x, we can now substitute it into the y equation. So therefore y is going to equal 2x plus 1 over x all squared. And there we are, that's the combined equation for question 1e, the Cartesian equation for question 1e. Let's have a go at 2a now, so start with the x1, x equals 2 ln, whoops, 2 ln, ln 5 minus t. Now let's divide through by 2 first, 
and now we can e both sides, e to the x over 2 equals 5 minus t. And then we can do a bit of rearranging, so 5 minus e to the x over 2. That's the, um, that's the t equals equation. Now we'll substitute it into y. So we'll do y equals 5 minus e to the x over 2 squared minus 5. Uh, we could expand this if we wanted to, why not? Let's do 25 minus 10 e to the x over 2 plus e to the x minus 5 and simplify. It's going to be e to the x minus 10 e to the x over 2 plus 20. So there we are, those are the two answers to this question here then. As you see, the first thing I did was rearrange x equal and to put it in terms of t and then substituted it into the y equation and do a bit of simplification where necessary. So have a pause, uh, answer some questions from exercise 8a, have a go at the difficult ones, have a go at the questions with the domain and range in there because that's generally what stumps students. It's good to work on things that are difficult. Uh, Great, so thanks very much for watching and uh, persevere, persevere through the difficult ones as always and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks for watching.